Recently, it feels like everyone is talking about Poland. 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 Was Poland. It's safe to say that Poland is making some serious moves in the world, with a stable, diverse economy, a new interesting aim and technology, and a serious investment in military power. Poland has gone from being a grey and poor place, filled with war and invasion, and being pretty much erased from maps, to a nation that not only survived, but thrived into a country others now look at with envy. But how did this happen? And most importantly, what do you even know about Poland? The time has come to explore the ins and outs of this nation. So this is Poland Explained. Poland is located in the heart of Europe, neighboring seven countries. Going clockwise from the northeast, there's the Russian exclave of Kaliningrad, then Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, Slovakia, Czech Republic, and Germany. With these countries, they share a total land border of 2,865 kilometers, the longest of which is with Czechia at 699 kilometers. Poland covers a total area of roughly 312 square kilometers, where about 8,000 of those are water areas with a total coastline of 440 kilometers. This put the country in the 71st spot in the world when looking at the country area. And to put that size in perspective, it's about twice the size of the US state of Georgia and slightly smaller than New Mexico. The terrain is mostly flat, with some mountains along the southern border against Slovakia. And this is also where we find the highest point of the nation, Ruzi, which stands at 2,499 meters. The lowest point is on the complete opposite side, near Razgi El Blaski, and is actually at a negative 2 meters. The largest lake is Lake Snidarvi, while the largest body of water, when looking at the full size, is the lagoon that is shared with Germany. On the Polish side, it's called Salev Szewczynski, while it's called Stettiner Haf on the German side. The longest river is Wisla, with 1,213 kilometers, and is shared with both Belarus and Ukraine. About 30% of the country is covered in forests, and 48% of agricultural lands. With some of the natural resources of Poland being just arable lands, and also coal, sulfur, natural gas, copper and silver. The climate of the nation is temperate, with cold, moderately severe winters and mild summers. Whereas in most places, the weather can occasionally reach high temperatures in the summer and low ones in the winter. But when looking at the average temperatures, it's still considering mild and moderate. The population is roughly 38 million people, which puts them at the 39th spot in the world, just below Canada. And most of these people live in either the northern coastal area in the city of Gdansk, the southern part and the city of Krakow, or in the cities in the central area such as Lodz and Warsaw. The last mentioned city is also the capital of the country, and holds about 1.8 million people of the total population. The median age of this population is, like most European countries, kind of high. 41.9 years to be exact. And with that, they ranked at the 39th spot in the world. So clearly the majority of the population is in the age span between 15 and 64 years old. 14.53% is 14 or younger, while 20.6% is 65 years or older. Now, the population growth rate isn't something Poland does very well, as they have one of the lowest growth rates in the entire world. In 2023, this number is estimated to be a negative 0.28%, meaning the population actually shrinks instead of grows. One reason for this might be the low birth rate of the country, which is just 8.31 births for every 1,000 population, or to simplify even further, 1.41 children born for every woman in the country. Another reason might be the high death rate of the country, which is 10.75 deaths per 1,000 population the 27th highest in the world. Why that is, it's hard to say. Perhaps it's because the government focuses on other areas than health, as they spend roughly 6.5% of the country's GDP on health-related matters. Or perhaps it has something to do with the country's love for alcohol. A study from the World Health Organization found that the Polish people, on average, consume around 11 liters of pure alcohol per year, which roughly translates to 120 bottles of wine. Or maybe it's because of their tobacco usage. Even though they're not by any means the worst when it comes to this, 24% of the population still uses tobacco in some form. But it's most likely not an overweight issue, as this isn't a major concern in the nation, although it's also growing, as it does in many parts of the world. 
And considering all this, the Polish people still have a fairly decent life expectancy at 79 years, an age that puts them at the 67th spot in the world. When it comes to educating its population, Poland usually spends around 5% of its GDP on this matter. And since 2019, they've been closing in on this 5% again after a couple of years of spending closer to 4%. And the literacy rate is very high in the country, with 99.8% of the population being able to read and write. The Republic of Poland is divided into 16 provinces. It sits in the UTC plus one time zone, the official language is Polish, and the national anthem is called Mazurek Dabrowieskiego. The chief of state is President Andrzej Duda, and he has been in that position since August 6, 2015, when he received 51.5% of the votes. He then got re-elected in 2020 with 51% of the votes. And the head of government is Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki. The flag of Poland consists of two stripes of red and white, and their national symbol is a white-crowned eagle. The white on their flag is said to represent this eagle, while the red at the bottom is the field of the coat of arms. As mentioned at the start, Poland has a well-diversified economy that has proven to be a good concept for high growth, as it has been one of the most resilient economies in the European Union, even during tough times. And one of the key reasons to this almost constant growth is Poland's ability to figure out how to grow in various stages of their history. First of all, they managed to capitalize on the old communist legacy of industry, which they then used to attract investments from the West that helped them scale up and increase the production of goods within the country borders. This later made it possible to join the global economy of imports and exports by sending that goods to other nations and taking a profit in return. And now, most recently, they have shifted focus again into becoming a major player in the tech scene, something big tech is starting to notice. And as of 2022, companies like Google, Samsung, Facebook and Amazon all have established bases in Poland. When looking closer at actual numbers, and more specifically their purchasing power, Poland is ranked 19th in the world with roughly 1.6 trillion US dollars. And in GDP growth rate and GDP per capita, they sit around the 60th place in the world. And when looking at how much reserves of foreign exchange and gold Poland sits on, they are at the 21st spot in the world with a value of 166 billion US dollars. They have a labor force of about 18 million people, and yet one of the lowest unemployment rates in the world at just 2.6%. And the country has come a long way in the transition from the former Soviet era of industry work into a more service-based economy. And now, about 58% of the people work in the service industry. They export roughly 411 billion US dollars worth of goods each year, and import goods worth 380 billion being the 20th strongest country in both exports and imports in the world. Their biggest partner in both imports and exports is Germany, which stands for about the fourth in both segments. So they are a strong economy and they continue to grow. But this hasn't always been the case, as Poland has been under heavy pressure throughout history and even got erased from the map for over 100 years. The terms Poland and Poles first appear in the late 10th century, Mieszko I is considered the first ruler of Poland, and he adopted Catholic Christianity as the state religion. In 1226, the Teutonic Knights were invited to help convert the pagan Prussians, but instead they established their own state in northern Poland. An alliance formed between the Polish and the Lithuanians, and in the end they defeated the Teutonic Knights. In 1569, Poland signed the Union of Lubin, together with the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, establishing the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth major power in Europe. The Commonwealth had some internal problems, something that bordering countries took advantage of. And in 1772, the first of three partitions happened to the Commonwealth. The second happened in 1793, and the final in 1795. The lands and people that were once part of the Commonwealth were now ruled by Prussia, Russia and Austria. And Poland as a country disappeared completely from the map and didn't come back until after the First World War. In 1918, November 11th, after more than a century of foreign rule, an independent Polish state was finally restored, and Józef Pilsudski is named the chief of state. In 1939, World War II began with Germany's invasion of Poland on September 1st, and the entire world knows what horrible things happened here. In 1945, the Second World War ended, 
and after being betrayed by their allies in the Jalta conference, where the US and UK decided to split up Europe and leave Poland on the wrong side, Poland's borders shifted westwards and the country became a communist state under Soviet influence. In 1980, Gdansk shipyard strikes led to the formation of the Solidarity Labour Movement. In 1989, the signing of the Round Table Agreement resulted in the first free election in Poland since 1928, and communism began to collapse in Poland. In 1999, Poland joined NATO, and in 2004, Poland joined the European Union. Now, Poland is an important member of both these organizations, much thanks to their geographic location on the edge of NATO's eastern flank. And the history of invasions of the country has clearly made the Polish heavily invested into securing its borders. And in the last couple of years, Poland has really started investing into its defense, with the estimated numbers coming from NATO showing Poland spending the most defense expenditures out of all NATO members. And Poland even said that they're going to increase this number even further, spending upward of 5% of its total GDP on defense. Something tells me that Poland just does everything to be ready for anything and to be able to hold their own ground no matter what the future looks like. With its history of invasion, oppression and a whole lot of awful things, Poland prepares for the worst. Other countries that join NATO and the European Union for example, I kinda get the feeling they probably think that the alliances will help them in a crisis, while Poland has a history of being let down by their allies when they needed them the most, so they're preparing to be alone again. All this history has really turned Poland and its people into true warriors, and that mindset in turn has led to a country that is booming even in hard times. It will be very interesting to follow this country in the future, and I will not be surprised if this will be one of, if not the strongest force in Europe in the future. Now, let's go and learn about a new country in the world, by clicking one of the videos on your screen right now.